Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and you know what? Time marches on. Let me give you an example. I started at KCET a little over 25 years ago, and when I first started at the station, I wasn't hosting California's Goal. That hadn't even been thought up yet. I was hosting a series of short little programs, two, three, four, five minute segments called video logs that aired between the regular programs on the station. They were interstitial programs. That went on for four or five years before we moved into the programs that we're doing today. So long story short, I was in the office the other day looking through some of these old video logs and I came across one that we shot right almost as soon as I came to KCT. This had to be 1984, maybe even 1983. It was early on. I looked like a teenager in these things. Anyway, the program that I looked at, the video log I was looking at, was called Warthogs. We came to the Los Angeles Zoo in search of warthogs, and boy, did we find them. I had a great time looking at this old video log from 1983, 1984, and so what we're going to do right now is take another look at the warthog video log, and then we'll be back for a warthog update. Get ready to go way back in time. We're talking a teenage Huell Hauser in 1983. Here we go. It is so much fun to come to the LA Zoo. Bring all the family, all the kids, spend the day looking at the animals. There are the elephants, the mountain goats. You can watch a bear take a bath. And the monkeys will keep you amused for hours. They're all so cute. And then there are the warthogs. Now, how do I put this diplomatically? Let's just say no one has ever accused a warthog of being too attractive. And neither of these warthogs have won any beauty contests recently. They are unique though because they're the only warthogs to be exhibited at any zoo in the Western Hemisphere in over 40 years. They're recent arrivals at the LA Zoo and they're definitely making an impression. <laughs> Here is a woman who is laughing. <laughs> they're not that funny, are they? What well, do you they're think not of pretty? <laughs> well, it's about the ugliest animal I ever saw. <laughs> what a thing to say! Isn't that mean? A lot of people would say they're ugly. What they're, would you say? I think they're ugly. <laughs> I do think so. <laughs> well, can you say something nice about the warthogs? Their coloring is very soft gray. That oh, is lovely. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Neil, everybody says the same thing about these warthogs. That they're ugly, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you've heard that before. More than a few times, yes. What do you think about them? You work with them day in and day out. I wouldn't call the word ugly. I'd say very unique. Uh, ugly isn't quite the word. I think they're only to the point of being cute almost. Warthogs are wild pigs from Africa, uh, basically any grasslands uh, south of the Sahara. The male has these large protuberances, that, hence the name warthog, uh, below the eyes. It's mainly fleshy, there are some bony knobs on the skull to support Well, you mean them. they actually, they're actually warts? They're not actually warts. These are flesh and bone, uh, just part of the natural uh, beautification process. They're fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> An adult male warthog gets up to 300 pounds plus. These are just kids, it's a two-year-old male and oh, a so year-old So they're gonna get female. a lot bigger. At least twice as big. They're real active, they're always looking around, they're real curious, they'll come up and look at you and, and check you out. Boy, when they look at you, they look at you too. Yeah, their eyesight isn't real good, that's why they kind of move up and, and look and move up a little closer. I mean, it's mainly their sense of smell that's very acute. What would you say to the person who just says they're just ugly animals? Well, I'd say beauty isn't skin deep, you know, using old cliches. Uh, rather than just be turned off and say, ooh, and 
hug and walk away. Just take a time to watch them for a while. They're really pretty fascinating. They move around quite a bit and root around, and, and they're pretty interesting to watch rather than just consider them ugly and move on. They're kind of cute in their own way. <laughs> I think they are, yeah. What do you mean in their own way? Well, the little fur that they have on the side of them and um, their eyes. They have their own personality, their own traits. You know, God made us all and we're all a little different and he is definitely different. We interrupt this video log for a special Warthog update. This just in from Warthog Central. Here at the LA Zoo Nursery, a new development in the continuing Warthog story. Three baby warthogs are now on the scene and are being taken care of in the zoo nursery. Susie and Laurie, could I have the facts, all the facts, and just the facts about these young warthogs? Okay, we have a male and two female warthogs born on April 5th, 1987, and they're being raised on a formula called Spiflac, which is a sow's milk replacer, and they're doing very well. They're very aggressive little creatures, too. They look like they're very hungry little creatures. They're always very hungry. Now, baby warthogs look just about like big warthogs, don't they? Yes, they do. They don't really have all the, the warts, which are the, <laughs> <laughs> the bumps that they have, which is actually skin. But they're, the male has the warts, which are more prominent in the males already. This little guy right here on the end. Uh huh. And then the two females are pretty much identical, although one's larger than the other one. Now the question that I've been hearing all over the zoo all morning, what have you named these baby warthogs? Well, we're trying to come up with good hog names. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, uh, we're thinking along the lines of um, Daisy here on the end, Ethel here in the middle, and then the little male we thought we'd call Huel. <laughs> so there they are, the three newest additions to the warthog family. And I must say, it's hard to describe exactly how it feels looking into the eyes of one of those warthogs, knowing it's named after you. At the zoo, probably for the last time, I'm Huel Hauser for Videolog. Ethel, Daisy, Huel, come on. Well, time has passed, and looking back at that old video log, I got to tell you, it doesn't get any better, any more fulfilling than knowing that you had a baby warthog named after you, my little namesake, Huel. And to be completely honest with you, and this is kind of embarrassing, I had forgotten all about little Huel until I looked at this old video log and of course that got me thinking wonder how Huel is doing I've been a bad father I better come back to the zoo and check up on little Huel and see how he's doing so here over 25 years later we have come back to the entrance of the Los Angeles Zoo we are being met at the zoo gate by introduce yourself to everybody Jeff I'm Jeff Holland curator of mammals here at the LA Zoo curator of mammals and that includes warthogs yes, and is. I have come here you heard me set it up I've come here and I feel very negligent in having you know not been keeping up with him all these years I've come back to check up on little Huel well, got some bad news for you, Huel. Uh, little Huel is no longer here at the well, Wait a minute, what do you mean little Huel is no longer here? Little Huel and warthogs are no longer here. Warthogs are no longer yes. here. Um, what happened? Well, little, little Huel and, uh, went to Cincinnati in 1987. And, that uh, long ago? Yeah. Wow. Why and did you send him to Cincinnati? Well, we sent him to Cincinnati as part of a breeding program. So he would uh, become a father uh, there did in Cincinnati. He, did and he, he did. Succeed? He succeeded. And he had three uh, piglets. Uh, so I've got three grandchildren. Yes, you do. Three yes. grandchildren warthogs now. Right. But, but there are no warthogs here at all was there a particular reason why you decided not to have warthogs any longer yeah we actually did uh warthogs are fairly common in the wild and we made the decision to concentrate on the more highly endangered wart uh pig species i got so, you. so what we have for you are some Visayan warty pigs that are critically endangered uh from the philippines so uh, wait a minute if we can't see warthogs we can see what did you call warty them? pigs warty pigs that's really their name that's warty the name. pigs yes well, now, how can I put this diplomatically? The warthogs weren't 
they they kind of had a face that only a mother and a father could love. I mean, you right. know, they're not really the most attractive animals in the world, but then of course the real beauty of an animal, just like with a person, is what's inside, not what's on the outside. How do these warty pigs compare to ward hogs? Uh, I, I think the warty pigs are sexier than you the do? ward hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's going to be interesting to find out. So our adventure now is going to take us inside the Los Angeles Zoo, not to see the ward hogs, but to see the... Warty pigs. The warty pigs. And boy, there's a, a name of an animal that will pique your interest. We're going to go see, up close and personal, close and personal right. some warty pigs. Okay. The time has come. We are now deep into the Los Angeles Zoo. I don't know how far we've come from the front gate, but we're in a, you know, how far have we come? We're in the far reaches of the zoo. The far, far right reaches back. of the zoo, the outback of the zoo. And we have come up on the little pin and Cameron's gonna come in and shoot the warty hogs with his camera because people know what we look like. We want people to know what the warty pigs look like. So come on in, Cameron. This is interesting. What do we have here, Jeff? We have a mother and four little piglets. Four do you call piglets. them piglets? Yes, they're called piglets. Uh, she has two boys and two girls. And uh, she was brought up here after um, she mated with the father, Elvis, who we will see later. Um, so she could have uh, an area to herself to, to raise her kids. Now these are cute little piglets and I don't see any warts on them. Why do you call them warty pigs? Well, when you see the male, when we see Elvis, you'll see the warts on the male. The so males the males have the, warts. have the warts. Right. The female, now that's a pretty big female back there in the back and she's looking pretty closely. She's still very protective of her little piglets, isn't she? Very much so. She's been a great mother and she's been very protective of the piglets and uh, most uh, wild pig females are like that. Very What's protective. that noise she's making? Um, it's just a, mainly a stress call. You know, she's, she's concerned about what's going on and uh, keeping in contact with the kids and trying to let them know that there's, they need to be aware. Yeah, because we're kind of standing back here looking out at them. We couldn't go out and actually touch them. Both, these are uh, serious animals that are supposed to be, you know, they're not supposed to be domesticated so we can go play with them. Correct, right. Yeah, they, are, they are wild animals. Now, what is the story on warty hogs? I have never heard of a warty hog before? Well, most people haven't. Um, they're, they're a very uh, rare animal. Uh, they're critically endangered. They come exclusively from the Philippines. They're actually endemic to an island chain there called the Visayan Islands. So the whole world, they're just found the on one find set them. of islands in the Philippines. Well, actually there's there are six islands that they were found on in, in this island chain. They're already extinct on three. Um, they're probably extinct on a fourth. So there's only two islands that are remaining and 95% of that habitat has been destroyed. So they've been reduced to a very, very small population. So it's a big deal that they're here in the Los Angeles Zoo, and are they here for breeding purposes so that you can have more of them in the world? Yes, it is. This is a, uh, acts as an insurance population. Um, so if anything happens to the remaining animals out in the wild, there'll be animals to draw upon to reintroduce them back to the wild. Wow, these are just, but you know what, I got to tell you, they don't have the same look necessarily as warthogs. I think they're more attractive in a way on the outside, don't you? Yeah, I, I do. I agree. Um, well, you said they were sexy. They were sexier, right. They're a lot sexier than the wart warthogs. Spoken um, only as the head of mammals could speak right here at the zoo. <laughs> Correct, yeah. I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? It, it is. Most people don't like pigs, and, uh, you know, that's part of the problem that they have in the wild is, you know, they're, they're viewed upon as, as food or pests, and so they're hunted. Um, Do so people eat them? Is that why they're They hunting? are, yeah, they are eaten by the, by the people over there. And most pigs, you know, anywhere in, in, the, in the world are eaten. So, you know, they got a lot of things stacked up against them uh, to try to survive. What do they eat? Uh, they're pr primarily rooters. So they'll root for, you know, tree roots, um, vegetable roots. Um, you know, they do raid crops um, in the wild in the Philippines. So a lot of farmers probably consider them pests. Yeah, they are considered and pests. And have no concept of how endangered they are. Right, and that, that is one of the major problems. Look at that one. What's he doing? He's drinking out of the... 
That's one of our uh, enrichment items. Uh, so we put those in there to, to keep them occupied, and uh, he's actually using it. So wow, it's really good to see. And they're happy just kind of rooting around. And boy, you can tell the mom. Look over here at the mom. She's really staring at us, and she is making that noise. Yeah, she's definitely being, trying to be protective of the kids. Um, she's more concerned than they are. Um, but she's, she's doing a good job. She's doing what she's supposed to do. Well, you know, the, you know, the main thing that's different with the warty pigs and the warthogs is these are forest animals. Uh, where your warthogs, you know, they were savanna animals, so they had that broader, broader face and, uh, you know, uh, harder kind of nose. a flat face. Yeah, for rooting, really rooting around in, the, uh, in a hard ground. Um, in the forest, the soil is pretty soft. It's, you know, you don't have to root as hard. Uh, so they don't have that real broad uh, face for that type of activity. Is this about as big as a female warthog gets, the mother right here? Uh, for a warty pig, yeah, that's as big as they'll get. That's an adult size. So they're, they're a lot smaller than uh, most of your other wild pigs. Well, I hope that our viewers, I know our viewers here on KCET have stuck with us because this is a learning experience for all of us to see these little warty hogs up in person, up close and in person. Uh, and w I feel very fortunate. It's not usual. You get to see the mother and the four little piglets all together, right? Right. Yeah, you know, this is nice experience for everybody to see. Do they get many visitors coming up here to see them? Well, actually, this is an off-exhibit area, um, and we, we did this, set her up here um, so she was secluded so she could raise her, her piglets. Um, she so had will they raised, ever be seen by the people here? Not this group. Um, we got a, the male Elvis. Uh, we got another female coming in uh, that he'll be paired with, and when they have kids, they will, uh, people will be able to see them. So this is one of those things that even though people can't see these animals right now, oh boy. Yeah, they're getting, they get a little stressed, don't yeah, they? Yeah, she's getting, getting more upset about, about the whole situation. This is, this is one of those things that even though people who visit the zoo can't see these animals, this is one of the real purposes of a zoo, the class that the LA Zoo is, right? True, correct. Yeah, we're, you know, our main, our main goal is conservation. You know, we're trying to preserve the remaining, uh, you know, endangered species out there. So a lot of our space uh, is dedicated to off-exhibit space so we can have uh, different groups set up and be able to breed them. Yeah. So we have that insurance so the population. breeding of them and sending them out to other zoos right. and even some back out into the wild if they become yeah, almost that's extinct. the ultimate goal, right? Wow. Well, this has been very exciting. There's mama over there, boy, keeping a close look on her baby. She is just traveling back and forth. Boy, they move fast, don't they? Yeah, they're very, very fast, uh, very swift in the, when they run through the forests. I would love to be out in the forest and see them, although I'm not sure I'd want one of them coming toward me out in the forest. Well, more than likely, they're going to be running away from you, so you'd <laughs> be really rare to see them out there. Well, this has been exciting to visit this mom and her four little babies, her little piglets, but there's even more to come because now we're leaving here and going to see Elvis. And if you think this was a treat, wait till you see what's yet to come. Next stop on our warty hog adventure. We've come just a little ways now down the hill. We're going to go see Elvis. Elvis. He's the father of the piglets that we just saw. We just saw. And we've hooked up with this fella. Your name, sir, is? Art. Okay, now what is your position here? What's your title? Uh, throw keeper on the string here. Okay, I take care of the warty pigs. So you take care of the warty pigs on a daily basis. Yes, five days so a week. So do you you have a a very close relationship I've with Elvis? Work, yeah, I've been working with him for five years already. What's he like? Is he a friendly warty pig? Uh, pretty much so. He's okay. <laughs> One of the <laughs> nicer ones. As far as warty pigs go. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got some food here for him. What have we got here? Some of these things are moving. Uh, Mealworms and bananas. Okay, so the mealworms, they like mealworms and uh, fruit or? Fruit, we give them uh, carrots, uh, sweet potato or yams, and they get greens. So you're one of the few people who can actually interact with these warty pigs uh, out in the wild, so to speak. Uh, yeah. They, they get <laughs> to know you over the years. Yes. All right, so you're going to go in that way and bring Elvis in. We're going to go this way, back in this second kind of a holding area here because the mother and the father and the piglets kind of stay separated, don't they, Jeff? In this particular case, we, we did. It's mainly because the, this particular mom had not raised any piglets before. Okay. Um, 
Here in most cases that they'll stay together. Okay, there he goes. He's going over to to let Elvis in. Now, tell us a little bit about Elvis because Elvis looks totally different from the other warty pigs we have seen today. Looks totally different than the fully grown female looks. Yes, uh, the males are a little bit bigger. Um, what makes them unique for warty pigs is you notice that the, he has this big mane on, on his head and neck. And during the breeding season, it actually gets bigger and grows out more. And so that way he's more attracted to the females, apparently. Um, after the breeding season, then all that hair falls off. And really? he, then he looks just like an overgrown female with warts on her face. What are those big horns, tusk in the front there on Elvis? Yep, those are incisor teeth um, and grow out uh, as tusks. And you also see he's got some warts, which is where they get their name. Where are um, the warts? Just um, oh, look no, on the face. Oh, they're covered with hair right, right on the side of his lower part of his jaw there, side of his head. Yeah. Those are warts? Those are warts. That's Why are they there? Name. Um, mainly it's uh, for uh, when males are fighting, it's sort of more of a protective um, uh, thing because it's just a fatty tissue, that's all that, that really is. And so when males are fighting or females, it's uh, a protective. Um, and why is he so friendly? I mean, look at this. He, 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 he's really, well, I know he's after the food, but. Just over the years, he's, you know, he's gotten used to art and he knows he can trust your art. Um, you cannot do this with, with all the animals. Um, and not even all the warty pigs. Um, it's all individual and depends on the personalities. He likes to be rubbed, doesn't he? He does like being scratched down and uh, they enjoy that a lot. Art, where does he enjoy being rubbed the most? Just right on the side? Kind of like a dog? He never goes over on his back and puts his legs up in the air and wants you to rub his stomach, does he? <laughs> that would be something to see. Boy, this is amazing at how docile Elvis is. Yeah, he's, he's actually a really good pig. He's Just because really Art well. is there, he knows him, he trusts him. Right. Uh, they've spent a lot of time together. And you know what? Again, he's a very attractive animal in his own way, isn't he? Yes, yeah, he is, definitely. Um, I wish you were here during the breeding season to see the mane, the, the full hair. That they you get. mean it's bigger than that? Oh yeah, definitely. It falls down in front of their face and uh, it's actually very attractive. And this is, the, oh, this is what you're talking about when they got sexy. Yeah, right. They, the males put this show on to attract the females. Yeah, correct. And this has evolved over thousands, millions of probably, years, yeah. probably. Yeah, very much so. Now, is, is, is this, I guess, what well, he's endangered as well. Yeah, he's the same species that we were looking at with females. It's just the male of the species. And so. we're down to how many now in the world? Uh, there's, there's less than, probably less than 500. In the whole world? In the whole world, right. And there used to be probably thousands, thousands. tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands right. of these. Yeah, you consider that all six islands that they were found on were completely forested. There's probably a fair amount of them. So all this has been brought about by the deforestation of these islands in the Philippines. Right. And you, the eradication of these, they, they don't have a habitat anymore. Right. They don't have a home. They're being hunted because they're pests. They're being hunted for food. So the combination of all three, it just, it's really taking a toll on them. Wow. Um, so... Without those areas being protected, you know, the zoos may be very well be the last place you're ever going to see the species. Well, now we're ending up back at the front gate of the Los Angeles Zoo. We've hooked up. Jason, you're head of the, what, public relations here? PR marketing, yes. Okay, now you were telling us as we were coming back out from the zoo that Jeff is being too modest, that he's really one of the best in the country. Jeff's a swine man. He is actually the vice chair of the pig and peccary tag, which manages pigs and their close cousins, the peccaries, in zoos all throughout North America. So you were saying he knows as much about pigs as anybody in the country. Yes, yes, he's, a, he's we, and we have the pig collection to prove it. I mean, we have a lot of wild pigs here at the zoo. Well, you know, we've had a lot of fun with this thing today, but in the, in the truth of the matter is, this is important, isn't it? And uh, the, what's happening to these these pigs, these warty pigs, because they are endangered. And if it weren't for the LA Zoo and other zoos like them all over the world, these animals could well disappear from the face of the earth. Yeah, this very well could be the last place uh, anybody will ever see warty pigs. You know, wow. unless we're able to get the habitat, remaining habitat protected, 
this could be it. So this is why it's so important to you know have zoos involved in conservation for these species. Well, congratulations to you and all the others here at the Los Angeles Zoo who are doing such a wonderful job uh, in this area and other areas as well. As we were walking out, Jeff recommended yet another group of pigs. What were they called? They're called Chacoan peccaries. Chacoan peccaries. Right, and they're uh, relatives of the pigs, not exactly like pigs. Are they warty? Um, no, they're not warty. Uh, but they come from South America, and uh, the, these particular ones uh, were thought to be extinct up until 1972. But now you have them at the and Los Angeles Zoo. Right. Now, don't be offended, but I'm pigged out for a while. That's uh, understandable. That's <laughs> okay, but please come back. I've seen enough warts and enough pigs and enough warty pigs and warthogs to last me for a while. I'll check in with you later on to see the... Chacon peccaries. Okay, and Very you good. know what? We have had a lot of fun with this. But you also said something about the necessity of putting some light on some of these animals that are less visited and less loved than some of the others. That's right. You know, every, every animal has a story. And everybody who comes to the zoo, they want to see the giraffes, the elephants, the lions, the gorillas. But nobody comes in and says they want to see the warty pigs. So this has been great to get some attention to these animals. Or the peccaries. The peccaries, because both of these animals are endangered. They need the attention. People need to know about them. When you know something and you see it, then you care about yeah, it. Yeah, and see, there is a bigger lesson without trying to wax too philosophical. Animals and people, it's not just what on the outside. It's what's inside. And these little warty pigs and warthogs and peccaries may not be immediately attractive to the eye, but they are in their own way beautiful creations, aren't they? Yes, they, they're very much so. Yeah, that's why we like them so much. That's why you love them. That's why I love He's them, right. He's a big man. <laughs> Boy, we've had a good time. We didn't find little Huell. He's in Cincinnati no. having little warthog babies. Although he's probably, that was a long time ago. He's, long time ago, right. He may not be... Uh, <laughs> he, he may have lived his life out, <laughs> yeah, yes. He may not be with us anymore. Anyway, little Huell isn't here, but the warty pigs and the peccaries are here. It's all part of the continuing and wonderful story. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.